What's up guys, it's Mars from Audio Judgment and today I'm going to answer the question how to determine the power handling of your speaker. Turns out, it's not a simple answer. Why would you want to know the power handling of your speaker? Well, if the power is high enough, you know you have the option to annoy your neighbor. But mainly, people want to know the power handling of the speaker so they can make an educated pick when choosing the amp to go along with it. If you buy the speaker from a shop, you're going to have this number in the specification sheet. However, what happens when you build your own speaker? Let's say you build a two-way speaker with a mid-bass driver and a tweeter. And they are both rated at 50 watts. What's the power handling of the speaker? If this is not your field of expertise and are forced to make an educated guess, you are probably tempted to say that it's 50 plus 50 equals 100 watts. And no one can blame you. When I grew up, 2.1, 5.1, 7.1 audio systems for desktop computers were very popular. And that's how they market them. You got five channels of 40 watts each and a subwoofer of 250 watts, total of 450 watts. And there's no denying that that's how power works. You add everything together. But when it comes to power handling, if two or more speakers share the same channel, things are different. And I'm going to give you a little advice here. You can use it whenever you don't know what you're doing. Think like a programmer that tries to find bugs. Go to the extreme. So in our case, a two-way speaker with uh, 50 watt speakers, a 100 watt amp, seems legit. But let's go to the extreme. Let's imagine we have a 300 watt tweeter and a 10 watt woofer. Using our logic, a 310 watt amp would be fine. But it's quite obvious that it's not. You could make an argument that no one pairs a 300 watt driver with a 10 watt one. Which is true, and others may think that for a two-way speaker with 50-watt drivers, a 50-watt amp is more suitable, which is indeed closer to the truth. However, it's not that easy, and I'm going to show you my point. I'm going to oversimplify things. Start with an ideal model that is easy to follow, and then progressively add complexity until we reach the true power handling of the speaker. So let's do this. Let's take a real-life example. The cheap floor standing speaker I made a while back. It's a two-way speaker with a tweeter and a mid-bass driver. Now let's look at the power handling. Tweeter is uh, 60 watts and the bass driver is also 60 watts. How convenient. So using the seems legit theory, a 60 watt amp would be fine for this combo. Okay, let's make things more complicated. Let's take impedance into consideration. The tweeter is a 4-ohm driver and the woofer is an 8-ohm driver. Let's model this in XSIM and we are going to use the resistors instead of speakers. So this is our setup. We have the 4-ohm resistor at the top, which is the tweeter, and the 8-ohm resistor at the bottom, which is the woofer. And uh, this is the amplifier. And normally an amplifier will be stable at 4 ohms, so we are going to switch this to show the power at 4 ohms. And then we are going to add a, a power dissipation graph. Let's make this larger. And we are going to increase uh, the power of the amplifier until one of the speakers reaches 60 watts, either the tweeter or the bass driver. So let's increase the power. Now the blue line, which is the tweeter, reached 60 watts. So this is the uh, maximum power handling of this system. So the amp is 60 watts at 4 ohms, and that is the maximum power handling. Sim's legit theory holds true for now. The bass driver only gets 30 watts, but they're both under their power handling rating, which is what we want to make sure. Now, let's step it up a notch. We know that speakers don't have fixed resistance like a resistor. It varies with frequency. Bass impedance looks like this, and the tweeter looks like this. 
and let's input this in XC. So you can see we have the tweeter up top and the woofer at the bottom. They both have the frequency and the impedance uh, graphs uh, input, but we only need the impedance graph. So now let's add our power dissipation graph, like so, and add our two speakers. And we can see, uh, using the same amplifier, 60 watts at 4 ohms, we can see that the tweeter exceeded the power handling at 90 watts, so we need to dial this down. So let's dial this until it's below 60 watts. So now the this is the tweeter, yeah, the blue line. So the tweeter now is in the safe zone, and the woofer is way below its power handling rating. So there we go, a 40 watt amp is more appropriate. However, we're not quite done yet. There is a crossover for these drivers, and adding electrical components to the mix changes the impedance curve. Let's add the crossover. This is how the schematic uh, looks with the crossover in place, and let's add our graph. Add the two speakers to the graph. And let's check it out. We can see that both drivers are in the safe zone and we can increase uh, the power of the amplifier. And we're going to do this until one of them reaches 60 watts. There we go. Increasing the uh, power of the amp will exceed 60 watts for the woofer this time. There we go. At 100 watts at 4 ohms, the woofer reaches the maximum power handling. Why things change? You can see this, uh, these resistors in series with the tweeter. And let me delete this. Two 8 ohm uh, resistors in parallel is equal to one uh, at 4 ohms. I just did that because it's uh, difficult to find one uh, with a uh, high enough power handling. So if I add to the graph uh, this resistor, we can see that it dissipates even more heat than uh, the tweeter itself. So that's why the tweeter has better power handling than the woofer, because uh, that uh, power is shared with the resistor. In conclusion, for this speaker, the maximum power handling is 100 watts. And are we done? Nope. Let's go a little bit deeper. There are two things to worry about when talking about power handling of a speaker. First of all is thermals, which we just discussed. If this speaker receives 100 watts or less, it will be safe. If you exceed this value, the voice coil of the speaker will start to get hot. At some point, the insulation will melt, the coil will short itself, the impedance will drop, it will receive even more power from the amplifier, which will, give it, which will get it even more hot, and eventually the speaker will die, and silence will fill the room. However, there is one more thing to worry about. X max. If the bass driver reaches its maximum excursion at 50 watts of power, even though it could uh, handle 100 watts electrically, now it's limited to only 50 watts. If you push the speaker beyond the speaker X max, few things happen. First of all, distortion. The coil leaves the uh, section where the magnetic field is the strongest and the speaker is not controlled properly. If you push the speaker even harder, you will reach the maximum stretch of the surround, which can result in premature failure of the surround. Pushing it even more, the voice coil can bang on the back plate of the magnet. Permanent damage may occur as the coil may not be centered anymore and continuous distortion will be present even at lower volumes. How do you check for X-Max? Well, you can use WinASD or any modeling software for that matter. And this is presuming you are designing your own box or you know the specifications of the speaker and the box itself. And this is the modeled frequency response, but uh, we will switch to cone excursion. And we have this red line, which marks the 3.5 millimeter mark. And this is the X max of the speaker. Quite low, but what can you do? This is a cheap driver. And then we will go to signal and uh, this is the cone excursion at 1 watt. So if we incre increase this to 5 watts, we can see that the uh, excursion of the speaker 
uh, exceeds the x max uh, below the resonant frequency of the box this dip uh, marks the resonant frequency of the box and i'm going to disregard that because maybe you should put a filter for the very low frequencies and you can make the argument that such low frequencies are not that encountered in normal music so uh, let's increase this until we exceed the x max so at 10 watts we can see that we exceed uh, the x max by a little bit so uh, the power handling of the speaker is 10 watts in this case so this is one way to check x max however i devised a little measuring setup just for fun so don't judge it too much this is not lab science this is bro science so here's the deal we are going to do acoustical measurements of the speaker microphone placed semi near field to minimize room reflections next we are going to use a voltmeter and an amp meter to check our power intake we are going to do multiple frequency sweeps at increasingly uh, volume levels at some point we are going to encounter a high level of distortion this is our cue that the speaker can't handle any more power the measurements will be done from 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz not making the measurement down to 20 hertz as this speaker is not meant to play that low and at 20 hertz it will reach x max easily so these are our three measurements uh, the power indicated by the meters are 1 watt the first measurement the second one is 8 watts and the third one is 29 watts so if you look at the, uh, at the distortion graphs uh, we want to make sure that uh, the distortion is below 1% some people think that under 2% is just fine uh, meaning that it's not hearable many will contest this but let's say anything above 5% some will be generous and say 10% is uh, really bad and you should not you should turn the volume down if you reach those levels of distortion so let's look uh, at our graphs at 1 watt we can see that uh, everything is below 1% this is 1% we can see we have something exceeding at uh, 1.5 kilohertz exceeding the 1% mark this might be something wrong with the speaker or with the speaker design remember the this speaker uses very cheap drivers so don't uh, have much expectation when it comes to distortion and uh, so this is considered safe that one watt <laughs> one watt of power is safe so let's go to the eight watt as we can see the distortion uh, went a bit higher now uh, it exceeds two percent uh, in this point and in this point looks good to me and uh, uh, if we go to 29 watts uh this is the two percent mark this is the five percent mark there uh, this spot exceeds five percent and in two percent it exceeds in many spots so you might consider that let's say 30 watts will be the maximum power you could give the speaker and not encounter distortion well you will encounter distortion in, in this section so i don't know let's say 25 watts let's say 25 watts uh with uh, little with little distortion present in the end what's the conclusion should i get a 25 watt or a 100 watt amp for this speaker the short answer is 100 watts just because you have a small amplifier doesn't mean you can't damage your speaker most of the time distortion comes from under power damps anyway you push the volume to the max and the amp clips the signal you're thinking that the speakers are overdriven but in fact it's the amp which is sweating and can't keep up and that's why you hear distortion so don't be afraid to get a larger amp i always suggest to get a bigger amp sometimes the recording is at a lower volume so a bigger amp can compensate for this just make sure to turn down the volume when the next track comes if if it's recorded differently a bigger amp gives you more flexibility but anyway in real life these numbers don't mean much they just give you a rough idea on which amp you should pick but at the end of the day power handling is given by common sense 
does your speaker start to produce weird sounds? Maybe it's time to turn down your amplifier. Does it start to smell like hot electronics? Maybe it's time to turn down your amp so you don't burn your voice coil. As a result, get a good amp with plenty of power on tap and just pay attention when listening to music. And if you have kids, pay even more attention. But jokes aside, don't overdrive your speakers, have fun while listening at a pleasant level. And I'll see you next time. Peace.